Hi. All right. Thank you so much for coming out. How do I look? Yeah. Is the beard compensating for the hairline? <laughs> Woo! Yeah. yeah, balding guys in the room. Yeah, you're doing great, man. <laughs> that was too quick. I am an actor in addition to doing this, and it's fun to go bald as an actor because as my hair gets further from my forehead, the roles I get cast in get further from the plot. <laughs> Always starts with a laugh and, oh, <laughs> every time. Yeah, a couple of years ago, I'd get lines like, Sarah, I'm Ethan. Now I get lines like, Sarah, this is Ethan. <laughs> Good to see you. I got a feeling about you too. It's good. It's like, there's some whoops for New York City. We like the city. We like living in New York. Yep. That's the sound of people who have been here for like six months. That's it. That's... <laughs> I've lived in New York for about five years now, so I'm turning into an asshole pretty good. Anybody else? It happens slowly. Like I used to give to charity. Now I will miss my train just to see a couple break up. <laughs> Because that's New York. We don't wish pain on anybody, but if it's already happening... <laughs> pull up a chair. <laughs> it's true. The city's gross, isn't it? Isn't it terrible? We have to stay positive, though. Yes, there's a rolling Gatorade bottle full of pee on the train, right? <laughs> but think of it as half full, right? right? I saw that on the train this morning. Everybody, like, there's that, that's the communion of New York. We all, it was on the train, nobody looked at it, nobody said anything, but everyone just lifted their feet and it rolled right by. <laughs> like a game of soccer no one wanted to play, it was great. <laughs> she liked that, that's good. <laughs> that's the, like, my favorite part about New York is you never know what you're gonna see. You stop asking questions at some point. You're like, yeah, why wouldn't there be a guy with hooks for hands outside this place? Selling only a factory sealed VHS copy of the Pelican Brief. Why not? Why not? It'd be weird if he wasn't there. Like, be... You stop asking questions. It feels like the logic of a dream. You just accept it all, right? In fact, if you were talking about a nightmare that you had and a New Yorker came late to the conversation, the New Yorker doesn't know you're talking about a dream. I mean, you're over there like, I saw a rubber duck floating in a pool of blood and a puma with a man's face. There's the New Yorker. Where, Port Authority? I love it. Side note, look, a little public service announcement. Don't ever tell anybody about you a dream you had. That nobody, Nobody's listening. No one's paying attention. You ever have to, like, it's like jury duty for friendship. You're like, oh, no, I'm going to listen to this. I don't want to. There's only one time in history someone said, I have a dream, and then anyone paid attention after that. <laughs> yep, tighten up. White guy talking about race. Yep, yep, yep. I'm not going to talk about race. Can I talk about white guilt for a second, though? Can I do that? I was, thank you, man. <laughs> because I got a, a white woman woo, I'll talk about <laughs> A couple years ago, it was snowing, and I was walking back to my car, and someone had written in my back windshield, hashtag Black Lives Matter. And I'm like, I agree, but now everybody has to see me wipe that off. <laughs> 50 people on the street, like, mm -mm, no. It's terrifying. <laughs> um... I'm single, give it up. Thank you. That's why I do comedy, because there's no other scenario I can say that and get that reaction, you know? Like, if you walk by, I'm alone at a bar, I'm single, give it up. Thanks, huh? I don't know how to talk to women, I'm 34, I still don't know. I mean, I'm there, I'm at the bar, I flirt, but then I just bail on it immediately. <laughs> Like, what are you drinking? What? I didn't say anything. <laughs> um, may be bothering me. No, it's not good. I'm work. Try the online dating thing. I saw this girl. Her, <laughs> her profile on OKCupid said, uh, I'm in advertising. And then she only had one photo. There was a bunch of women smiling at a dinner party. <laughs> That's bad advertising. Like, 
Has anyone ever seen that commercial? Like the new McDonald's BLT. Maybe it's one of these eight sandwiches. <laughs> that exist. I like doing stand-up. It's hard to do it now because, you know, you need your computer to write and your computer has the internet and I don't think that's fair, you know. And you, and you ever just lose an entire day on the internet? You're like, I'm gonna send one email and then you black out, you wake up. How did I get on a YouTube video of the top 10 worst Boston accents in movie history? <laughs> My friend's an asshole. He's like, Charles Dickens wrote 15 novels. What a work ethic. I was like, eh, it helped that his typewriter wasn't also Pornhub, right? Because <laughs> how far would he have gotten if he was like, it was the best of times. Everybody gone? Loose corsets. <laughs> Ooh, that's a tale of two titties, right? <laughs> it's not a sex joke, that, uh, that's a literacy pun, so... If you didn't laugh at that, you should read more. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Have a day at Columbo. Appreciate it.